Deepak. Hello, good morning. This is Deepak. I'm in Israel, in Tel Aviv at the moment. And this is the beautiful view from my window. I hope you can see it. And out there is the Mediterranean Sea, some high rise settlements. And this is the marina right now. And, uh, and it's uh, really pretty here. It's really pretty here. Uh, it's a bright uh, early morning. Um, hi Samantha Lambert Casey. So it's an early morning, a little after 6.37. And uh, I woke up really early and uh, done my meditation. I'm going to start my yoga. But I thought I would, uh, I would uh, post today because uh, I sometimes wonder why does the Pucks intend to speak sentence really good time. Anyway, I thought I'd answer today's question on discovering your cosmic self from um, based on questions in uh, my book, You Are the Universe. And uh, this is what I'm seeing in my awareness. This is my universe right now. Love. Good morning. South Africa. Uh, so, um, in any case, I thought I'd share with you what my consciousness is experiencing at the moment. A beautiful morning. Um, the marina outside uh, the hotel in Tel Aviv, Israel. I'm speaking on Sunday, by the way, uh, on You Are the Universe, Discovering the Cosmic Sun. And uh, I would love to actually have you come to my evening talk in Tel Aviv, you can look it up on Google and, um, and it's at 7.30 in one of the big halls. So far about 4,200 people are coming but there will be more. So if you happen to be in Israel, Tel Aviv, close by in Jerusalem, do come, okay? Do come. So what I'm going to do right now is actually I'm going to start answering your question. And I'm going to see if I can find the right light. The right light to answer your question. Is this light okay? Uh, because I can change it. But tell me if it's okay. Okay. So I can uh, change the lighting here if you want. But if it's okay, then I'll uh, read the first question. I'll give you a little bit more of a tour. And uh, then... Uh, go on from there. The question is from Robin. She or he, I don't know, Robin sometimes could be a, a man's name and sometimes um, a woman's name. So uh, Robin says, reading now about the discovery of a solar system only 40 light years away around a dim sun that has been named Trappist-1. Uh, would love to hear Deepak talk about what it would mean to our planetary consciousness to envision this other world, a solar system potentially like ours, but so unlike it at the same time. Could it be aware, self-aware, other-aware? And could we ever dream of reaching out to and connecting with any potential space-time beings at a distance, speaking of non-locality in a meaningful way? Boggles the mind. So there are lots of questions here. And so a lot of uh, possible uh, answers. First of all, I just, uh, Robin Pace says, I'm a she. Good to meet you, Robin. Uh, I will, uh, I will uh, uh, now at least know who uh, uh, I'm speaking to. But in any case, uh, let me start by telling you that uh, I am, uh, on the plane, I read this uh, really nice book. It's called Quantum Mechanics, The Theoretical Minimum, What You Need to Know to Start Doing Physics. It's obviously written for professionals, has a lot of uh, physics, but um, here's uh, something from the first, uh, first uh, chapter. It says, our sensory organs are simply not built to perceive the motion of an electron. The best we can try to understand electrons and their motion 
is as mathematical abstractions. States uh, are different states of abstractions. Quantum states are represented by different mathematical objects and, a different, and have a different uh, logical structure. Particles cannot be seen by sensory apparatus. Okay, so now based on that, uh, you know, I was thinking uh, on the plane that uh, what we know as subatomic particles are basically modes of knowing in awareness of uh, mathematical abstractions. That's the uh, quantum particle. A quantum particle, a quantum object, is a mode of knowing uh, of mathematical abstractions in awareness. What about the classical world, the world that I just showed you right now outside my window with the marina and the, uh, and the Mediterranean Sea and my own body, you know, my own body, this book, this is all, these are all quant not quantum objects but classical objects. And classical objects are, uh, in a sense, modes of knowing and sensory perception in awareness as well. So, uh, sensory awareness, modes of knowing, of sensory perception in awareness. That's the classical world of objects. So that includes my body, includes this furniture, includes the chairs, includes the ocean, the marina, and uh, all those boats outside. But it also includes uh, uh, the stars and galaxies. It also includes uh, the new, uh, uh, the new uh, solar system discovered by us and has now been named TRAPPIST-1. So who, made, who gave it the name? We gave it the name. Soon we'll give names to all those planets and um, uh, we will have created a reality, a solar system uh, about uh, 40 light years away, uh, describing a mode of human cognition, a mode of translating the awareness of mathematical abstractions and sensory experience in the form of sensations, images, feelings and thoughts into the whole universe, including our own body. So as our awareness expands, then the modes of knowing and experience expand. And as the modes of knowing and experience expand, and as they reach collective consciousness, then we have new adventures of discovery both in inner space and outer space, which are in a way not different because there are no boundaries in the universe. We can just say that uh, as our awareness expands in the boundless universe, then our experience of the boundless universe also expands. And the I or our that I mean is not the body-mind because that's part of the classical world of objects. Now with this understanding, the, the future is limitless. So what are we seeing the future in, um, in uh, our own technology right now? We're seeing what has been called artificial intelligence, but I'd not like to call it that. I'd like to call it augmented intelligence. We are also um, slowly discovering expanded awareness through technology, through VR, through um, augmented reality through uh, creation of avatars and in the very near future or even now through deep learning, uh, machine learning and soon quantum computers. So as we uh, explore our own creation of reality, the human construct, the human universe, through these technologies, then the possibilities are limitless. Right now, our understanding of non-locality does not allow us to, um, to send information faster than the speed of light. So a uh, solar system 30 light years away would take uh, 30 years of light traveling or any vehicle traveling at the speed of light, 180,000 
miles per second to reach there would could be many 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 generations so instead of that how about if through augmented life extinction we could actually slow down the aging process and then have a being in that uh, augmented life extension modality travel this so he would ultimately reach that place and not have aged or she would reach that place and not have aged. That's only one um, way of doing it. But the other ways and Punacha Machaya's chiming in, augmented intelligence, the meta-human being, yes. The meta-human would reach there um, in um, maybe very quickly in the meta-human's frame of reference for time although people on earth would have aged many, many years. Augmented intelligence, augmented reality, augmented life extinction, augmented beings as well. So, you know, um, Robin says, um, uh, could it be the other solar system? Could it be aware of self, aware of other, other aware? Well, let's say the other beings and we ourselves could become meta-aware. Meta-awareness would lead to a new body-mind system, a new way of perceiving our planet and solar systems, all as part of a cosmic awareness all as part of a cosmic awareness. Now that would be absolutely fantastic, wouldn't it be? So again, in this book, by the way, um, which uh, I really enjoyed, um, the one thing um, that I uh, think uh, is uh, very important here that uh, Leonard Susskind says, quantum mechanics, the theoretical minimum, what you need to know is to start doing physics. Right in the beginning, you know, people argue, does the quantum world apply to the classical world? And right in the beginning, he says, as far as we know, quantum mechanics provides an ex exact description of every physical system. But some things are massive enough that quantum mechanics can be reliably approximated by classical mechanics. What he's saying is that um, the quantum principles apply to classical world too. So by doing quantum calculations, we can actually apply them to the classical world. In fact, the classical world is an approximate uh, uh, or close enough approximation uh, to um, the classical world is a close enough approximation to quantum mecha mechanics, which is far more predictive. Okay, so now I hope... Uh, uh, I've answered Robin's question to some extent. She says boggles the imagination, but imagination is also a product of consciousness. So I think what we have to realize is if we want to explore other worlds, because this is our next adventure. Our next adventure is both um, in inner space and outer space, rec recognizing that even these, um, we, even these are human constructs. Uh, the space is boundless. The chit akash is uh, boundless. It's the infinite consciousness that curves back within itself and experiences it as itself as uh, body, minds, and universes, but in the future as meta beings and meta, uh, meta humans and uh, meta worlds. So this will take us to a new frontier altogether in the reaches of both inner and outer space, artificial distinction, lie the new adventures of the human imagination, the raw materials of a new imagination that will create new worlds and new, uh, new um, dimensionalities. Robin Pays asks, Chitakash, yes, curves like space-time, yes, Chitakash is the curving of space-time that uh, moves the so-called objects in the universe. I mentioned yesterday that space tells mass how to move and mass tells space-time how to curve. So 
this is it. Uh, let's uh, explore new frontiers, both in our imagination, in our consciousness, and on reality. Congratulations to the great scientists who have uh, discovered TRAPPIST-1, a name that we have given to a new experience and a new modality of knowing in human consciousness. Thank you. Good luck and oh, visit uh, discoveringyourcosmicself.com and uh, also um, uh, read the book if you have the time, ability or desire. The book is You Are the Universe, Discovering Your Cosmic Self. And uh, then if you're in uh, Israel, come to my uh, event if you can. I think it's at 7.30 or 7 in Tel Aviv and you can find all the information event is put on by Mentors channel. You can find it on Google and um, I'll see you there if you happen to be in Israel and if you have the time, ability and desire to attend. Now let me show you a little bit more of where I am and then uh, I'll say goodbye. Okay, so this is the beautiful view from my window. This is the marina and that's the ocean out there, the Mediterranean Sea and those are some high-rise buildings in the distance if you can see but this is right outside there's a little shopping center beautiful restaurants and just an amazing place to be okay so thank you and uh, goodbye and uh, we'll connect very soon take care and god bless Okay, so take care and God bless and I'll be in touch. Take care, bye-bye and have a wonderful day wherever you are. Keep reaching for the stars and I can say now that you don't need to keep your feet on the ground. Uh, take off. Bye.